This is how the mental health awareness movement could be negatively affecting your well-being and what you can do to counter it. Over the past few decades, awareness around mental health issues has increased enormously, and that's largely a really good thing, but there are hidden dangers too. One of the main problems is due to the emergence of a misleading perception that negative emotions are bad for our mental health and should be avoided or reframed or let go of as soon as possible. I think most of us know intellectually that negative emotions aren't wrong. We know that they're signals that carry important information about what we need to pay attention to, what we need to change, and where there might be conflicts between our inner and outer worlds. But even though we know this, we still demonize inevitable emotions like fear, shame, and anger, and we try to push them away or at least reduce them rather than listen to them and use them productively, which is a far better route to mental well-being. But of course, there are other perspectives we could take. For example, clinical psychologist Dr. Tracy Dennis Tiwari argues that anxiety is often simply a signal that we care deeply about something and we perceive it to be threatened. When you choose to see anxiety in this way, it can become productive. It can lead you to anticipate things that could go wrong ahead of time and prepare for them. Alternatively, if the situation is completely out of your control, you can choose to focus on the positive reasons behind your anxiety. And when you shift your attention to the thing that you value as opposed to the threat that you can't control, you can come up with more and better ways to nurture it, advance it, or protect it. Again, intellectually, this makes great sense. The challenge is that thinking this way requires full acceptance of negative emotions and the ability to think objectively whenever they occur. And most of us just don't have those skills, largely because we've been conditioned to see things like anxiety as the opposition. So instead, what happens is we become anxious about our anxiety, and then these second-order emotions just compound the original negative feelings and do far more damage. And this isn't anybody's fault, it's the world we've grown up in, but there is something we can do to train ourselves to more adaptively respond to negative emotions. We need to flip the script and start patterning in the idea that negative emotions are healthy, productive, and can even be positive experiences even if they don't feel positive at the time. To do this, next time you're in the grip of a negative emotion, or perhaps retrospectively if you don't catch it at the time, try asking yourself these three questions. First, is this emotion appropriate to my current situation? If not, take a step back. It's easy to bring old feelings into situations that don't necessarily warrant them, but it's rarely helpful. Take some time to calm down so you can react to what's actually going on. Second, if your emotional reaction is appropriate to the current situation, ask yourself, what is this feeling telling me? Focus on the positive reasons for your experience, what you care about and the values involved. And then finally, turn your attention to the potential actions you could take to process, cope, make sense of, or move on from your experience. I hope this helps.